What's going on guys, Mr. Acolyte here, and today we are doing a team building guide for the current version of Dragon Ball Fighters. The focus of this guide is to break down every character in the game and give you my recommended positions as well as the recommended assists so that you can have the knowledge you need to build the best team that works for you. Obviously there are a lot of characters in this game and a lot to go over, so let's not waste any time and jump right on into it. Okay, so before we break down all of the characters individually, let's go over the most important part of the discussion, which is team positions. As you can see for this list, we have four different positions, point, mid, anchor, and flexible. Let's break these down one by one so that you understand why each character is going into each category, and this will help you a lot when deciding how to build a team that suits you the best. So starting off with point character. Point character is arguably the most important character on your team, because this is the character that sets the pace of the match. When the match starts, there are three main jobs that a point character has that are very important to the overall team. The first one being point characters need to have great neutral, that way they can help set the pace. The second job being assist usage. A point character is unique because they are always going to have two assists behind them as soon as the match starts. So you want your point character to be someone who can really utilize assists very, very well. Whether that be in the neutral space, keeping the opponent away, or opening the opponent up on block. You want them to be able to really utilize assists in a really good way. That way you can help set the pace in your favor. And finally, the third thing that a point character absolutely must do is build meter. Meter is the lifeblood of your team. You need meter to do basically anything that matters in this game, so you want your point character to build as much meter as possible. Next up is the mid. The mid does not have as much pressure on them as the point does, as they are more of a support character. A mid's job is to support the point and basically benefit off of the hard work that the point does. The main thing that constitutes a good mid character is someone who can spend meter very well. So characters in this role will usually be looking to spend all the meter that your point built up to help get your team in an advantageous situation. And of course, the anchor, as everyone knows, this is the comeback character. Now, as of the most recent patch, anchors have been severely buffed, as in all characters can do a level one into level three to help you mount a comeback. Because of this, some people have said that they feel that everyone is an anchor. And to an extent, that's kind of true because everyone can do big, big damage as an anchor now. However, there's still a huge factor that decides whether or not a character is a great anchor. And that is simply put, the ability to play the game solo. An anchor character needs to be able to play the neutral, the up close game, or at least zone very effectively without the help of any assists. This is a hard thing to do. That's why it's very important to pick a good anchor because if you end up in a position where you don't have any assists, you're going to want to be able to still open up your opponent to mount that comeback. Yes, level one at level three is great, but remember that's four bars. And usually when you're by yourself, there's going to be an increased usage of vanishes, EX moves, stuff like that. So if you're a character that has trouble opening people up, it's going to be hard in a lot of instances for you to mount a comeback if you can't play the game well without having assists behind you. And the last category we're gonna have for the list is flexible. This one's pretty self-explanatory. These are characters that fit into multiple positions. Most characters in this category will play at least two positions equally well, and some might play all three positions equally well. So now that we know exactly what each of the roles mean, let's go ahead and start breaking down each of the characters one by one. For each character, I will recommend a position, break down what they bring to your team, and then recommend an assist. As always, there will be timestamps down below, but with all that said, let's get started. Android 16. Android 16, I would place in the anchor category. Android 16 has some very, very nice anti-zoning tools. This means it's hard to keep him out. Specifically, his EX command grab can fly through key blasts, projectiles, assists, all that stuff, and get the scoops going. He also, when he gets close, he has very, very good solo pressure that he doesn't even need assists to continue because he has his own plus move that he can mix up with a frame trap move, as well as he has the fastest command grab in the game at 16 frames. 
He also has a very, very great, very valuable assist, and that is 16B. It is a very long lasting assist with multiple hits and a huge gap in between. This is the kind of assist that augments a lot of rushdown characters, so that's a good reason to have 16 in the back. That way he can augment your point in medium. Not to mention his anti-air dunks. He's got good meter build. He's just an all around solid character and a very nice choice for an anchor on any team. Android 17. 17 I would place in the flexible category. What Android 17 brings to the table is an insane amount of meter gain. He is one of the highest meter earning characters in the entire game. Just his standard B and B alone is almost always guaranteed to build you about two bars. So this means he's great in just about any position. If you want to put him on point and have him get you a lot of meter very early, you can do that. Or you can have him in the back and active tag him in to add some meter to any combo that may not have built that much meter on its own. Either way is up to you. He also has very, very strong defensive tools. He's one of the hardest characters to raw tag, guard cancel, or super dash on since he has a ton of anti-air options with his Rekkas as well as his slide. He also has his own barrier, which stops people from swinging on him. He has a lot of good defensive options, including an invincible level one. So all these things together make a very flexible character. Where I would recommend 17 the most is most likely on point. I feel like he is an amazing, amazing, point character again due to how much meter he builds and how well he utilizes assists with his Rekkas. Having his Rekkas and assists is a very very powerful thing. However, if you just want to utilize the strength of his A assist, you can do that too. That's what most people do. They run 17 in the back and they have their point and mid kind of go crazy with the threat of his barrier assist to keep people in line. That is a very good option to do. That's what people do in tournaments. So you can go that route as well. Either way, you kind of can't go wrong having 17 on your team, no matter where you place them. Android 18. 18 is definitely going to go in the flexible category. This is basically now a jack of all trades character. She has reached the point after all of her buffs to where she really doesn't need anyone or anything to do anything. She has insane screen control thanks to the ability to do double barrier. She can do 17's barrier and her own barrier. So that means it's very hard for the opponent to do most things at neutral. Once she actually gets on your block, she has access to tons of plus moves, again thanks to 17 and she can even threaten doing 17 barrier on offense so if the opponent tries to mash she can literally kill you for mashing so the fact that she has such a strong combination of offensive and defensive tools on top of having combo loops on top of being a very high meter build character due to the way her barrier works if she ever does barrier and someone swings into it she gets a ton of meter the more hits the more meter she gets so Add in the fact that she also has a lot of mixed potential off of her level 3, 18 can literally do it all. If you want to put 18 on point to kind of stifle the opponent's offense at the start of a match, you can do that too. If you want to put 18 in the back and equip her barrier assist to make all your characters more scary, you can do that as well. If you, if you need a good mid in case your point gets smoked, someone who can come in and slow the match down, she does that too. So all in all, 18... I would recommend her A and her B assist. A assist for the defensive nature if you want to slow people down. B assist if you just want a good, reliable projectile assist. But either way, 18 can literally go just about anywhere on any team as right now she is one of the strongest characters in the entire game. Android 21. This is another character for the flexible category. Android 21 is the true jack of all trades character due to the simple fact that she has her move steals. Her move steals have been buffed many times and they are now at their absolute strongest. All of her move steals are very, very powerful and it puts a lot of pressure on the opponent because she is a character who, depending on who's on the other side of the screen, she can suddenly have a beam or she can suddenly have a frame one anti-air or she can suddenly have a piccolo orb. She literally keeps the opponent guessing because her move list can change on a dime. And even without the move steal, she has some of the best key blasts in the game. She has great screen control. Her up close pressure is crazy. She's got a very good command grab, some of the best buttons in the game. And she's overall just strong in basically any position. If, if you wanna put her on point and have her kind of control the neutral, you can do that. 
if you want her in the back for active tag situations or to utilize her very strong a assist you can do that as well basically wherever you place her she's super reliable and she can do just about anything you need a character to do in this game bardock a fan favorite character definitely going in the point category bardock is a pretty textbook point character the best thing about him is his neutral at round start he is very threatening due to the speed of his lariat his lariat basically can't be contested opponents just have to get out of the way of it so having his Lariat with assists behind him is very, very threatening. Thanks to the most recent patch, he's actually a much more threatening character overall due to his new loops. Especially his new corner loop does a lot of damage and builds a lot of meter. He's also, thanks to the previous patch before this one, his stagger game improved. Stagger game has always been good, but it got a little bit better. So add in the fact that he builds a good amount of meter. He does a lot of damage, has a lot of screen control, and utilizes assists very well. He's pretty much what you would call a textbook point character. Definitely not the best point character in the game, but super reliable, and depending on the assists behind him, is very, very threatening. When it comes to his assists, it really is up to the team you're trying to build. His A, I would say, is the most universal because of its speed and its decent block stun and very good hit stun, so you can use his A on most teams. However, his B assist is very, very great for mix-up characters. If you're building a team that's designed to mix people up, I'd recommend his B assist. And since he has an air tracking C, if you have a team that can utilize a C assist, his C is definitely not a bad option. Beers. Now this is one of the greatest anchor characters in the entire game, in my opinion. This character is basically ridiculous in every aspect. I'm pretty sure most people know that by now that he is without a doubt a top five character. He can literally do it all. But let's break down what makes him such a good anchor. The main thing is he is a character to where, yes, like all characters, he's better with assists, but if you take assists away, he is perfectly, perfectly fine playing the game completely alone. A lot of characters get completely shut down by his zoning. His orbs can be a huge problem if you don't have any sort of anti-zoning tools. Not to mention he gets very simple solo pressure on your block thanks to his orbs. He can be plus meterlessly. If he has meter, he can, he can be plus as well. And when he gets a knockdown, he's guaranteed Oki mix. Every single time he gets a knockdown, his Oki is a very big deal for most of the cast. And above all else, not only can he pressure you by himself, if he hits you, he does an insane amount of damage. He also has a lot of anti-zoning tools now, meaning he can just fly through assists and projectiles with a couple of moves now. So all of that together and the buff to his level three, he can get out of pressure, teleports behind you to do his level three now. So he is just the ultimate I can play alone character and that makes him one of the best anchors in the whole game. When it comes to assists, I would recommend his A assist over anything. His B assist is very wonky and his C assist is probably the worst in the game, in my opinion. But his A assist is in talks of being one of the best assists in the game. It comes out insanely fast at 19 frames, is multi-hitting, the orb cannot leave the screen, so it takes up a lot of space. So having beers in the back so your other characters can utilize such an amazing assist is another reason why you should have him in that anchor position. Super Buddy. So this character is a textbook mid. What he brings to the table is incredibly, incredibly high damage potential. Yes, everybody does damage in this game, but his damage is literally off the charts, even in a game of very high damage now. He's definitely one of the best active tag characters. If you have a point character, get a hit early and then active tag into Super Broly, he can tack on a ton of damage to any opening, especially if it's a medium starter. He also has very, very good Oki as well in the corner. He has some very good Oki setups and is generally a very meter hungry character. Like you wanna get him transformed as soon as possible, which costs three bars. 
So it's very good to have him in the middle and just be ready to pop that level three as soon as possible so you can power him up. If he does end up being the anchor on your team, if he's already powered up, the power up is even more powerful in anchor now. So, so all of these are good reasons to have him in the middle, ready to spend all that meter that your point character's building. When it comes to assists for him, I would say all three are pretty good, but overall I would recommend his B assist. In my opinion, his B assist is his best because it is an anti-air. If the opponent is up close, it will hit them very quickly and it does retain the armor. But however, the best thing about it is the anti-air property. There's not a lot of anti-air assists in the game. So the angle that his B assist covers is really, really great for point characters. Your point character can rush forward, which is basically exactly the kind of support you want out of a mid. Z Bully. This is another one for the anchor category. What can we say about the bully? He has quite possibly the best anti-zoning in the game. His bubble negates so much of this game, it's actually insane. It stops all assists, all projectiles, so it forces the opponent to deal with him. So if you end up with just the bully left, barrier will basically make it to where you can still fight back because they literally cannot zone you and they cannot call their assists freely. He also has a great key blast for this. He also has his very scary anti-air grab, as well as his up-close pressure being very, very scary even if he's alone. His grab is something that everyone has to deal with. You have to react to it. If he actually lands it, it could lead to a kill, especially a limit break. They also revamped his combo structure, so he gets very, very good solo combos now. Very, very good solo damage. Uh, the train as well has much less recovery, so he gets great combos off of the train. That's just armor on the screen whenever you want it. He can even do his solo level three mid screen. So his access to damage solo, his screen control solo and his pressure solo all make him a fantastic anchor. When it comes to his assist, I would recommend his A assist overall due to how much screen space it takes up. There's a very reliable projectile assist. You can also go for his B assist because it is a good sort of defensive one but overall i would say in most cases his a assist is the way to go captain ginyu my buddy definitely very easily goes into the flexible category ginyu is one of the most open-ended characters in this entire game due to the simple fact that he is multiple characters all in one thanks to the fact that his ginyu force is so powerful it honestly does not matter where you place him on a team. When it comes to neutral, pressure, oki, damage, meter build, all these things, he can do it all completely and utterly by himself. I would recommend though that you put him on point. It's in my opinion that Ginyu is at his strongest on point because him with the Ginyu force, with assists, is truly a force to be reckoned with. But you can put him mid and choose his Ginyu B assist and give other people access to the Ginyu Force and a bunch of meter build, as well as he is a fantastic anchor because, again, he can play the game alone. So where he ends up on a team is completely up to you and what kind of team you're trying to build. When it comes to his assists, as I said, Ginyu B is great and basically borderline broken because it gives everyone access to the Ginyu Force. You get two members on the screen at the same time. It builds a ton of meter. It's basically the best meter building assist in the entire game. However, I do think it's pretty hard to use. I would recommend using Ginyu A, especially if you're new to the character. And just overall, because Ginyu A, I think is a fantastic Lariat style assist. It's got good block stun, comes out fast, has good hit stun. So I would recommend Ginyu A, but you can use Ginyu B for the craziness. Just know that sometimes that craziness can come back to haunt you. Cell. Now this is a tough one, but I'm still going to say that Cell is a mid. Cell at this point in time, a lot of people are saying might be one of the strongest in the game, and that is due to the changes he received to some of his best moves, namely his perfect attack. His perfect attack is effectively a DP now. It is now frame four invul, meaning that as long as you have meter, it's going to be very, very hard for the opponent to pressure you in any way. He just has a get off of me that is not even unsafe. A perfect attack on block is basically safe because you can do perfect attack into assist call. So you add this in with the fact that he is one of the best stagger characters in the game. 
He has very strong mix-up tools. His level three mix-up is fantastic. His combo structure is great because it almost guarantees the corner, builds a lot of meter. He's just all around a very strong character. His neutral is still a little suspect, but due to the fact that perfect attack is actually invincible, it doesn't really matter as much. The main reason I'm still recommending him as a mid is because I still think that he's at his strongest when you have meter to spend. So having Cell waiting in the wings for an opportunity and coming in with a lot of meter is a very, very scary character for the opponent to deal with. For assists, I would recommend his B assist overall. His A assist can be decent in certain situations, but the speed of it is generally what turns people away from it, as well as the more limited angle from a traditional beam. But his B assist is very, very fast. It has very good range and it actually gives a wall bounce. So if you have a character that gets in quick and can utilize very fast assists, I feel Cell B is perfect for that. Cooler. This is a character who in the past I've often put in the flexible category, but as of this last patch, I'm of the opinion now that Cooler is one of the premier point characters in this game. Due to the fact that he has very, very good anti-zoning, especially with his 3H, he can just pass through assists and beams and projectiles of all kinds without a care in the world. I believe combining that with assists makes him a very strong threat. Cooler at the start of a match is a very tough character to deal with because at the start of the match when, you, when the opponent has no meter, they're gonna be very reliant on their assists and the fact that he can negate those makes him very scary. Not only that, his biggest strength has always been his stagger game and staggering with assists is always going to be better than without. So that's another good reason to have assists behind him. And last but not least, his most recent changes have overhauled his combo game. So now his combo structure is very assist reliant. And if you have assists behind him, he gets very, very big damage and very high meter build. So I feel it is in, so I feel it's in your best interest now to play cooler on point because he has turned into a character that can really strongly use utilize having two assists behind him, namely due to the changes in his OTG. He can get his OTG in a lot more situations, so that means the amount of damage and meter build that he gets off stray hits has gone way up. So combine that with his anti-zoning and his strong stagger game, Cooler is definitely a great character to lead the charge for you. For assists, you can literally choose any of the three. They're all situational. His A assist is the uppercut. As we all know, uppercut assists are very good, very reliable in this game. B assist is his 3 H, it keeps its anti-zoning property, so that's a great option for a lot of characters. And then a C assist is a beam. So whichever one you pick is going to depend on the kind of team you're trying to build, but a character like him having three good options is a great reason to have Cooler on your team. Frieza. Lord Frieza is definitely going in the flexible category. Frieza has seen a ton of buffs over the course of this game. And I'm happy to say that he only keeps getting better and better to the point where the current Frieza is by far his best iteration. What Frieza brings to the table is overwhelming zoning. His zoning now is insanely strong. His death wave got better. His you might die this time is one of the most obnoxious attacks in the whole game. He also has insane meter build, obviously really good neutral, good block strings even has a fake cross up. He's just an extremely well-rounded character. If you put Frieza on point, he can basically take control of the neutral and just bully at round start, chip away at the opponent, if not get an opening and build you a ton of meter. His meter gain is very, very good especially if he's on point. You could also run him mid if you want. His B assist opens up tick throw opportunities, which is great. So if you have a point character that has an LLL command grab, he can help make that character unblockable. So that's a good reason to have him in the middle with his B assist. And if you're looking for a great anchor, he's absolutely a fantastic anchor because of the fact that Golden Frieza is finally free. You can use Golden Frieza as much as you want. And the comeback potential is super high and Golden Frieza's damage has actually gotten even higher and the risk of him is extremely low now. Even if you run a time or you lose track of when he's gonna turn back to normal, it is actually very hard to punish him now. So, so putting that together with his already great screen control, Frieza is a fantastic anchor, great mid, great point, 
basically whatever you need. And when it comes to assists, I would switch between either his B or his C. As I mentioned before, his B assist, not only can you slow it down by holding back so you can give a lot of characters zoning that might not have great zoning and just have something obnoxious on the screen, you can also speed it up by not holding back so it's a multi-use assist, as well as again being a tick throw assist. In case you didn't know, a tick throw is basically when you set up your character's grab LLL to be unblockable, Frieza's B assist is perfect for that, so you can literally make characters unblockable by using that assist. If your character does not have a tick throw, his C assist is great because it's one of the best C assists in the game, comes out at a whopping 20 frames, uh, tracks the opponent almost full screen, and it's very, very hard to jump over. So his B and his C are both great. It just depends on what you need on your team. Gogeta Blue. This is a tough one, but I'm going to go ahead and place this character in the point category. Previously, I had said run him as a mid, but I feel point is really the only place for him. What Gogeta Blue brings to the table is strong mix-up tools, great buttons, and very high damage output. The problem with him is that he is a meter penalty character and his neutral is pretty suspect, as well as everything about him without assists is also very suspect. His block strings especially and his screen control without assists is very lacking. So before I would have said put him mid because he can't build meter, but if you're in a situation where you have him mid, and your point character gets smoked, he's not a very good character to run cleanup. You don't want him coming in, like let's say the match goes horribly, your point gets taken out, and now Gogeta Blue's coming in with no meter, and you only have one assist behind him to work with. It's not a very good situation. The mid character needs to be able to play some sort of cleanup, and I don't think that's the kind of character he is. He's a character who really just has to have two assists, and when he has two assists, that's when he becomes really scary. When it comes to assists, I would recommend his A. It comes out very fast. It has the wall bounce. It's just an overall very reliable assist. You can also use his B for more defensive options and slight anti-air options. It's also good for that too. Whichever one of those two that you want to use, I think both are good. It just depends on what you want for your team. Ultimate Gohan. This character has the potential to be the ultimate anchor. What Gohan brings to your table is pretty simple. He brings the level up system. He can go from level one to level seven. And basically, if you get level seven, you have a high potential to win the entire game. So usually when you have Ultimate Gohan on your team, you're building your team around him and the other two characters are only there to help him get to level seven. However, if you're not interested in leveling him up all the way, you can play him as a very great mid, just have him come in. I would recommend getting at least level three. I don't think this character is at his true potential unless you're at least level three. That's when he gets double air dash. That really makes his neutral much better and just him a much scarier character overall. But realistically, you should be focused on trying to get as high in levels as you can. So your other two characters should be helping him get there. For assists, he is another character who you can go just about anywhere with. His A assist is one of the best in the entire game. It is his uppercut assist. It is the fastest assist in the game, and I believe it's plus 80 on hit, which is way more than even pre-nerf Vegito A. It is absolutely ridiculous. That is basically C assist levels of hit stun. If somebody gets hit by Adult Gohan A, you're guaranteed to get your combo, so that's a good reason to choose that one, but you can also use his B assist if you're looking for mix, and his C assist is a beam C, so that is another great option. He's definitely a well-rounded character when it comes to assists for just about any team. Teen Gohan. Teen Gohan is by far one of the best point characters in this entire game at the time of this video. He has always been strong and reliable in the point category, but due to his recent buffs, he's actually incredibly ridiculous now. What he brings to the table is very, very strong neutral. He's got a great key blast, great angled key blast, and a very strong lariat. And the lariat buff is what really puts him over the edge because now he is a strong mix-up character. He actually gets high, low, left, right mix-ups off of his nearly full screen lariat. So 
Having him on point with two assists behind him just makes him basically terrifying. So if you add in the fact that he's also one of the most damaging characters in the game, having insane neutral and insane mix together just makes him a phenom of a point character. And there are few characters that I believe right now are better point characters than him. For assists, I would recommend either his A or his B. His A is an uppercut assist. As we all know, uppercut assists are very great. They're very reliable. And his B assist after the buff is also fantastic. He now throws multiple orbs. The block stun and hit stun are both around 100. It's actually, it's actually pretty absurd just how much hit stun and block stun his B assist is. So if you're looking for a more defensive assist, his B is great. But if you're looking for something for more offense, his A is great. Goku Black, another fan favorite. And I would say he is pretty much a textbook mid. What Goku Black brings to the team is very, very strong neutral. His neutral can go toe to toe with just about anyone. After all his numerous buffs to his neutral, especially his God Slicer buff, which makes that move immune to Super Dash, his neutral literally cannot be denied in how overwhelmingly oppressive it can be. Add in the fact that his block string pressure is very, very strong. He can reset his pressure almost infinitely. It's very, very hard to get him off of your block. He is a very, very strong offensive heavy character. His biggest buff recently was the buff to his teleport, which was already very strong, but now that he can teleport and remain on the ground, it just makes him even more threatening. And due to the fact that you're going to want to be teleporting constantly and using EX God Slicer and all that good stuff, he's very meter dependent. So it's a good idea to have him in the middle. That way he can benefit from a good point character, building him up a lot of meters so he can really go in and go crazy. When it comes to assists, while I do think his B assist is very good, I would highly recommend his A because it is my opinion that beam assists are back. They're basically the king assists, in my opinion, due to just the insane amount of hit stun on them. This stun on beam assist now is so high that you can literally just run across the screen and get a confirm, even if the smallest part of the beam hits them. However, both are very, very good. So whichever one you choose is gonna depend on what kind of assist is gonna be the best suit for the team that you're trying to build. GT Goku, one of the biggest winners of the patch. And I can't believe he made his way all the way here into the flexible category. What GT Goku brings to the table now is basically a little bit of everything. One of the best things about him is he's a very, very great stagger character. Due to the fact that they gave him back his light light, his staggers are very strong, very scary. He even still has a low option. He's a very, very high meter build character due to the way his routes work. His routes hit very hard. They do a lot of damage, build a lot of meter. And then of course, and of course, I'm sure you've seen it by now, his reverse Kamehameha having invincibility partway through the animation is still one of the craziest buffs that any character in this game received. It allows him to pretty much do whatever he wants at neutral. He can just get in, call an assist, get in if he gets a hit, convert it into a combo, get in, go back to neutral. The character is kind of unstoppable, and because of that, you can put him basically anywhere. If you want him to be kind of crazy at the beginning of a match, you can do that. If you want to wait till you build up a lot of meters, since he is a good meter dump character, you can do that and put him in mid. Or you can have him be an anchor, since he's so hard to hit now, and it's so easy for him to get in, he works as a very good anchor. So basically, whatever you want GT to be, he can be that now. He is literally one of the biggest success stories of the whole patch. For GT's assists, I would strongly recommend his A due to the fact that it got such a huge buff last patch. It's a little slow, so you do have to cover it, but you really can't put a price on the angle that it covers. It covers one of the best angles in the game. So if you have him at mid or anchor, your point character will basically be feasting off of such a fantastic assist. Goku Blue. Goku Blue is pretty much what he has always been, and that is a pretty textbook point. He brings very strong staggers and just overall very strong pressure to your team. He's pretty much got nothing but amazing buttons and very reliable neutral. So this just makes him a great character to pair with good assists and have him just go in and go crazy. Of course, due to the nature of his combo structure, he's a loot based character. So he builds a lot of meter when he gets hits. He also does a ton of damage. He's a level five character. 
He's got one of the best DHCs in the game. He's just very, very well-rounded, very reliable character. He even has a little bit of anti-zoning with the new change to his 5M going through Key Blast and of course his Teleport. If you're looking for just a straightforward, to the point, point character, I think that description fits Goku Blue perfectly. For assists, for assists, I would switch between either his A or his B, depending on what you need. His A is great because it has amazing tracking on the ground. You can actually pick up off of it now, although you do got to be kind of quick, but his A assist pairs very well with most projectile assists. And then his B assist is very good because it actually does go through Key Blast. So either his A or his B, depending on what you're looking for. SSJ. This is a character I would go ahead and place in the flexible category. SSJ, thanks to not only his buffs, but a lot of change in system mechanics, this is a character that can basically play any position because he's good at just about everything. Like, while he's not the best at anything, he's pretty good at just about everything. When it comes to neutral, his neutral is very strong, always has been, but it's now a lot more threatening due to the fact that beams are convertible. His beam is one of his go-to options at neutral, and the fact that he can turn it into a high damaging combo is very, very good. Before, that beam would have had to have been vanished, which costs meter, it means you build no meter and do no damage, but it's total opposite now. One beam is gonna build you a lot of meter and take a lot of life. So that means he's a great neutral character. Whether you want him to be on point and cover him with assists, you can do that. Have him be a mid to come out and play cleanup. And if he ends up being an anchor, thanks to the changes to some of his moves, like his EX Dragon Punch being more plus and actually being an overhead, he does have ways of playing the game alone. So I think SSJ is one of those nice jack of all trades characters. While not as scary as some of the others, he is very, very competent in just about every area. When it comes to assists, his B assist is very, very good. It's one of the best Lariat assists in the game because it's so, so fast and it's so high block stun. But again, I would say use his A because in my opinion, beams are king. In this patch, you just really cannot go wrong having a beam behind any character. UI Goku. UI Goku, I would place in the mid category. What he brings to your table is mostly amazing defensive options. He's probably the best defensive character in the game between his 6H and his numerous counters, as well as his backflip DP. However, most of his stuff is pretty meter dependent, which is why I would recommend having him be mid. You really want UI to come in with a lot of meter. Not only that, his DHC is very, very good since he can level two DHC even if he's not on the screen, which is very, very rare in this game. And if your point character gets smoked, he's a great character to come in and play cleanup because he really slows the match down due to just how well he can play defense. And besides his defensive tools, he is also one of the best characters in the game to prevent zoning. He has some of the best anti-zoning tools, the best again being his 6H. His 6H is pretty much a nightmare to all zoners. So if zoning is driving you crazy, UI is basically your best friend. For his assist, I would say basically all three are pretty good. His beam assist is decent, although again, it has a kind of an awkward angle, but you can hit confirm off of it very well now since that got buffed. His pillar assist is also very, very good for shutting people out. Obviously, the space is limited, but it's great because, you know, it's such a high anti-air. It prevents people from moving past you. It's got its uses, although awkward. And then he does have one of the better C assists because not only is it air tracking, but it's also completely invulnerable. So the assist that you choose is going to depend on the team that you're building. Overall, I would probably recommend his beam assist since that is the easiest one of the three to use. Base Goku. You already know. I feel kind of silly even explaining this one, but let's just go for it. What else needs to be said? The character was designed by Bandai to be an anchor, and I'm sure by now everyone who's ever played this game, and if you don't play the game, has seen Anchor Kaioken. If you land Kaioken and Anchor, the opponent is deceased. End of story, they're dead. <laughs> so if that's not enough reason to play on Anchor, I don't know what is. But outside of that, he does have pretty decent solo pressure. Obviously a solo damage to the roof. He can play neutral by himself pretty well as well. He does have his EX elbow for some slight defensive options. He's got his 2S for slight anti-air options. He's a very well-rounded character. And again, strictly put by his design, 
you're supposed to go all in on Kaioken with him. That's the that's the whole gimmick of the character. But outside of that, another good reason to have him in the back is he's a very, very high team utility character. Not only are all three of his assists great, not only are all three of his assists amazing, but now that they've buffed Genkidama to work with everything, basically every super sets up Genkidama now. So that means just having him on your team is a massive damage buff to the entire team. If you do a 1-1-3 one, one, and the three is Genkidama, you're basically deleting the character. So that's just a good reason to have him in the back waiting to just make your combo a kill combo when it might not have been before. And again, in terms of assists, all three are good. His A assist hits both sides. It's very fast. It wall bounces. It's ridiculous. B assist, we all know what B assist does. It builds so much meter. One of the best meter assists in the game. I'd say it is the best right behind Ginyu B. The only reason Ginyu B is better because it actually hits people. And then his C assist is a beam C. So whichever one you need, base Goku's got you covered. Go tanks. This little monster is going into flexible. The question about Gotenks is what doesn't he do? <laughs> it's easier to ask what he doesn't do because he does everything and he does everything in the most ridiculous way possible. His neutral now is absolutely ridiculous because of the fact that he can convert off of his beam. Everyone can convert off their beam, but almost no one can get as much off of a beam conversion as Gotenks. If Gotenks hits a singular beam, he can almost do what looks like a medium starter combo and build almost two bars. Not only that, his up close pressure is relentless due to his EX punch being plus. His damage output, if he does get a medium starter, is off the charts. He has his own Oki and it's, and it's some of the best Oki in the entire game. He is just literally the ultimate all-in-one character. While he can play every position, what I would recommend, I would recommend playing him point because I do think that point is his best position because if you have Gotenks on point, you're just guaranteed to build so much meter if you get even the smallest hit because he's also possibly the best active tag character in the game. Because of the fact that he can do four special moves before tagging, it just opens you up to want to active tag a lot. So you're gonna want him at least point or mid to utilize the active tag. However, again, due to all the stuff that I just said about how strong everything about him is, he does make a very reliable anchor as well. So you can put him anywhere. I would recommend point, but he works literally anywhere on the team because let's just face it, he's a broken character. <laughs> For his assists, again, it really depends on you. I would recommend switching between either B or C. His A assist is pretty good, but it's very, very situational. His B assist is a fantastic lariat. It has great block stun and amazing hit stun. And then his C is a beam C. So whichever one you choose is up to you, but all three options are amazing. Hit. Hit I would place in the flexible category. That is because Hit is a very open-ended character. What he brings to the team is a variety of defensive and offensive options, all of which are very, very strong. His defensive options can quickly turn into offense due to the fact of how his DP works. He literally has a tracking, teleporting DP that is safe on block. So this just makes him a character that just can't be ignored. He's also one of the best anti-zoners in the game. Zoners literally cannot keep him away due to his mini counters. And again, his DP and his teleport. He has a lot of ways of dealing with zoning. He's pretty much a zoner's worst nightmare. He also destroys raw tag and super dash very, very easily. So due to this fact, you can pretty much put him anywhere. If you wanted to put him point and have him slow the match down at the beginning when people are most likely to be calling their assists, that works. But if you want him to be mid and come in with a lot of meter and really go crazy, you can do that as well. And especially now with the way the level one to level three works, he does work well as an anchor because you can do the gun into level three. So if he comes in with a lot of meter, especially God forbid you have spark, definitely one of the scariest potential anchor characters in the whole game. When it comes to assists, it's kind of split down the middle on whether you're in the category of his A assist or a C assist. Personally, I would recommend the A because it's super invincible. It reaches a very good distance and comes out very fast. So I think his A assist is his best, but a lot of people love his C and his C is very good because it's also invincible, but you got to remember it's got the longer cooldown, slightly longer, not much longer, but slightly longer cooldown. 
and it's not invincible right away. So both are invincible. I would lean towards the A, but both his A and C are both very good on just about any team. Janemba. Janemba, I would place in the anchor category. He brings a little bit of everything to the table, but his premier thing is that he is a zoner anti-zoner, which is pretty funny. It is incredibly hard to start offense on Janemba because his zoning is so scary with not only his full screen EX slash, but his tracking key blast, which track you anywhere on the screen and his air 2h shuts down super dashes and raw tag so it's very very hard to approach this character but even if you stay away from him he is also a zoner's worst nightmare he has the best anti-zoning move in the entire game which is his projectile counter it works on all projectiles summons and assists it basically takes an assist and turns it into an offensive situation for him so putting this all together means he is a character that can basically play the game alone. So if he ends up as your anchor, you're really not in a bad situation because the opponent still can't mindlessly call assist or try to zone you out. They have to make very careful decisions, which is easier said than done. And when it comes to offense, he is very scary up close because his LL actually is a low now, which is crazy if you can even believe that. His LL is a low. His LLL, for whatever reason, is in vault. I don't know why, but that's another change he had. And then he still has his very fast and very, very hard to react to command grab. So even if he ends up alone, he can play the game incredibly well while basically stopping the opponent from being able to play the game comfortably. In terms of assists, I would recommend his A assist overall because it's basically a broken assist. The key blast tracking on it got buffed a while back and so it's an assist that the opponent always has to be on the lookout for. If you're fighting a Janemba A, you literally can never ignore it because it can just snipe you out of anything. However, it is a key blast, so expect a lot of RPS. The, the opponent's gonna be super dashing, they're gonna be reflecting. If you don't wanna deal with that, his B is a very good alternative because it's a very, very good and very, very reliable Lariat assist. Either of the two are both very, very great decisions. Jiden. Another one of the biggest winners of the patch, and he is going into the point category. Jiden is also on the short list for best point character in the entire game, and that is strictly because he does everything now. His neutral is incredibly strong with his air key blast, his grounded fast beam, and his air angled beam so he has incredible neutral his up close pressure has always been scary but now he is an absolute relentless stagger monster now that he can reverse beat meaning he can do his 2l even after he's done mediums now so his pressure basically never ends and then of course he is a damage machine his damage even in a game of high damage his damage is just on another level his supers and just his hits if he ever medium starts you you're basically just determined to die and he even has mix now if he has assists behind him because his 2m is so fast that he actually can mix up so he has a perfect perfect point character and if all that wasn't enough he actually has defensive options and anti-zoning options he has plenty of counters and projectile counters to prevent you from rushing him down or to prevent you from zoning him he even has ways of passing through projectiles so basically Jiden is just literally everything all in one it's just if he's at the front of your team he can take over the match very fast while putting a lot of pressure building a lot of meter doing a lot of damage he's uh, to put it simply he's just ridiculous <laughs> when it comes to his assists i would recommend his a assist you can go b assist if you like his b assist is a good projectile invul option but I feel like his A assist is better because it has very good defensive options. It has a wall bounce and it's very, very good in block stun. Kefla. Kefla I would put in the point category. And at the time of this video, I would say that Kefla is like the sleeper hit of this patch. I think with how crazy a lot of these other characters buffs are, I think Kefla has kind of flown under the radar. She is definitely up there when it comes to scariest point characters in the game. What she brings to the table is very, very strong neutral. Her neutral is amazing, especially with her anti-air key blast. But what really puts her over the edge is the chains to her beam. Her super dash after her beam gives her insane mix-ups. If she does beam into super dash on somebody's block, 
It is a gapless 50-50. You cannot reflect. So if you do beam super dash into assist call, it's a completely gapless 50-50. So now, not only does she have spectacular neutral like she's always had, and some of the best buttons in the game because she's pretty much unreflectable due to the way her buttons work. You can't reflect her light light. You can't reflect her 5M. She has a gapless low option. It's a very fast overhead. All that. Now she has gapless 50 50s as well. And she has anti zoning options. It's very, very hard to zone her because of her gigantic breaker and her teleport. And also gigantic breaker got buffed to be able to super dash off of that as well. So you can literally go from gigantic breaker pass through assists and then do mix up options from there. She is just a crazy, super well-rounded character. I feel like she is kind of like the sleeper hit of this patch. When it comes to assists, I would most likely recommend her A assist because it's such a reliable projectile. You can go to her B for block stun, but overall I would recommend her A. Kid Boo. As usual, Kid Boo is going to go in the flexible category. Kid Boo is pretty much a textbook flexible character because he does a little bit of everything. With the way his kit's set up, it's pretty much always been the case that Kid Boo does pretty much whatever you need. He's got very strong neutral, very strong up close pressure, and a very good combination of assists. If you want to put Kid Boo on point and have him you know, sort of mix and play good neutral with two good assists behind him, you can do that. But if you wanted to be in the mid position and take advantage of his very, very good assists, you can do that, such as his arm ball, because his arm ball gives everybody mix. So that's a very good option for mix up characters that you want to have in the lead. And if he ends up as an anchor due to the way his moves are set up, his reach, his key blast, and then having arm ball to himself, he can play the game fairly well alone. So. If you're looking for a character to fill a position that's missing on your team, although he is weird, I do think Kid Boo can do just about everything pretty darn well. When it comes to assists, he's one of those characters, again, who all three are great. If you want to do the arm ball for mix-up for other characters, great option. The boo ball is very, very good for a lariat style assist. You just want a quick lariat style assist that helps you get some mix-ups in there. And it's just good for general purpose. And then he's got a beam C. So his assists are just like his character. Kid Boo is just whatever you need. Krillin. Krillin is 100% an anchor character. What Krillin brings to the table is incredibly strong zoning, while at the same time bringing very strong mix, as well as very, very high damage. Krillin is one of the best team buffing characters. The main reason you want Krillin in the back is just that he makes your team better. Not only are his assists all team augmenting assists, but when he actually does come down to being an anchor, he can literally play the game 100% alone due to how strong his zoning is. They actually buffed his mix-up options. Now that his after image is invincible, the opponent can no longer just ignore it to 2H. They have to deal with it. So the fact that he has solo mix and very, very strong zoning and high meter build just makes him one of the most ideal anchors in the entire game. Majin Buu. Majin Buu, I've come to find out, is best played as a mid. This is due to the fact that his neutral is decent, but it's not really the best. So you kind of want him to be in the back waiting for his turn. And now that he can get his mix-up going without the need for assists, he's a much, much scarier character than ever before. Not only that, they did buff his button, so he's got better buttons. They buffed his special moves as well. He has access to his own plus moves now, which is great. So overall, he just brings a lot of mix-up potential to your team. If you have a great point character that's great at getting the party started, Majin Buu is a great mid because once you tag him in, he's almost guaranteed to get some hits. He's definitely the character to go to if you're looking for a strong, scary, mix-up focused character for your team. For assists, I would recommend his A assist because it's very, very fast. It has good hit stun and it works very, very well defensively. His C assist is also pretty good because of its air tracking and minor invincibility. But overall, I would say his A is the most reliable. Roshi. Roshi is a character I would place in the mid category. What Roshi brings to the table is very strong, unorthodox neutral. Roshi's neutral is very close to zoning. He's very, very good at stalling out with his jumps and his flips. He's able to just stay in the air for a very long time 
but he can also turn those jumps into a offensive situation since his special super dash is plus if the opponent blocks it out of the air or even on the ground he's very very good at basically slowing the match down but then stealing a turn out of nowhere not only that, his anti-air options are insane due to the fact of his lightning. You can literally keep the opponent out of the air. So he's the kind of character that is really, really good at playing cleanup. If it wasn't for his playstyle being so unorthodox, I feel like we would see a lot more Roshi because he's honestly incredibly strong right now in this current version of the game. When it comes to assists, I would recommend his A assist. It's a very, very good beam. You can also still use his B assist for the speed factor while it lost its armor. It is still omnidirectional, so it does hit in all directions, comes out pretty quick, and is very, very good for block strings. Nappa. Nappa is without a doubt a mid. He's one of the game's premier mids in the sense that his entire game revolves around the Cybermen. And the best way to get the Cybermen going is to let your point character do all of the heavy lifting, get a hit, and then active tag Nappa in so we can go for his mix-ups and resets. He's also a very meter-dependent character. You're gonna want to get those EX Cybermen out a lot, and that costs a lot of meter. So again, you want your point character to build the meter up, let Nappa come in, take advantage of that. He's also a character that has to vanish a lot, so definitely a big meter hog, but it's worth it because of the amount of damage he does and how he's basically unblockable. He also just makes the neutral insanely chaotic once he gets the Cybermen out. Without the Cybermen, his neutral is kind of shaky, but once the Cybermen are out, his neutral becomes super chaotic and very hard for the opponent to deal with since the Cybermen are immune to key blasts and assists. For Nappa's assist, I would highly recommend his A. His A assist is kind of bonkers. Not only is it sort of an optical illusion assist, it's very hard to see behind it. It's very, very plus. It tracks. It hits pretty high, it has a lot of hit stun, and it gives basically anybody mix. You can get super dash mix off of it, and it's very, very hard to see behind it because of how big the effect is. His C assist is good too, because it comes out of the air very fast. It's kind of like classic baby B, like before the nerfs, but overall I recommend his A because it just has too many great uses to it. Piccolo. Piccolo is definitely a mid. Another textbook example of a mid. His biggest weakness is that his neutral is a little lackluster. He can get zoned out pretty easily. And he's highly, highly meter dependent. That's why you want him in the middle, have that point character build him a bunch of bar. And then once he comes in, he can really go crazy if he's got enough bar and he's got good assist behind him. Piccolo is a character that I would recommend tagging in sooner rather than later because if he has a lot of meter and two assists behind him, that's when he becomes a huge threat. So you kind of want to get him in as soon as you feel like you have meter to spin. When it comes to assists, everyone pretty much knows A assist is the way to go. I do think his B assist is good now. If you don't feel like dealing with the RPS of A, his B assist reaches very far. They have buffed the hit stun. It has a lot of hit stun on it. But I do think his B assist is a very good Lariat style assist but it's hard to deny just how insanely powerful his A assist is. Super Baby 2, my buddy. Hands down, most likely the most flexible character in the game. Baby is pretty much nothing but a team buff character. His entire kit is basically revolving around the fact that it just makes your team better. His zoning is absolutely insane, with or without assists. His meter build is among the highest in the game. His damage output is absolutely ridiculous. He has access to assist steal once you kill characters on the other opponent's team. He can even negative edge those assist steal. He's got three very different assists that do very different things. His 6H can give everybody mix or corner carry. He basically does everything you would want. So just putting Baby on your team is just a buff to your team in general. And where you place him on the team strictly depends on what you want out of him. If you want to put him on point and have him kind of bully the neutral and set up your other characters right away, you can definitely do that. I would say that's his most popular role, but you can also put him mid if you want him to play cleanup or to come in and zone a little bit later. And of course, he is a very, very reliable anchor, especially now that he has an actual 2L low. He has plenty of ways of opening up the opponent alone. He can play the game completely alone, especially since he can zone you and steal your assists. He is pretty much the ultimate all-in-one character. For his assists, it really, really depends on what you want. His A assist is good for the neutral space, 
since it has the same benefits that he has. It comes back as long as you don't block anything. And you can even do the trick to where if you make them crouch, one key blast will leave and come back. So A is good for that. Baby B, we all know what Baby B does. Uh, it's tracking is suspect, but it's very, very good for combos and very, very good for block stun. And then his C is a beam C. It's hard to say which one I would recommend overall. As of right now, I think his C assist is his best because his A and B both have caveats to him. His A will disappear if you block anything, which is not good. And then his B is 50 frame startup. It's very hard to get his B assist out there without it getting smoked. So I would say overall his C is his best, but A and B definitely have their uses. It just depends on what you're looking for with your team. Tension Han, pretty much everybody already knows this one. One of the most famous anchors in the game. Obviously, he literally breathes damage, but since damage is not that big of a deal, let's talk about some of his other stuff. Tenshinhan has been buffed into being one of, if not the most self-sustained characters in the entire game now. Thanks to the changes to Chaozu, he can now literally play 100% by himself. If you add Chaozu together with his guard point moves and his mix-up options, Tenshinhan is now a completely self-sustained character. He can do Chaozu cancels from neutral or on block to confuse the opponent and keep them at bay because now you never know if Chaozu is actually going to do the psychokinesis or not. So especially at neutral, it completely keeps the opponent guessing and he basically has access to his own assist now similar to Ginyu and Android 18. The fact that Chaozu is no longer a risk and you can freely use it is a very, very big deal. And if you add that in to the fact that he has his overhead chop, which is completely unreactable, is an unreactable overhead on a character that deletes you if you get hit, is very, very scary. And of course he has his armored command grab, which has guard point on it. And then he has his guard point chop in the air and he has guard point volleyball fist. So he has all these armored moves. Volleyball fist, if you get the perfect input on it, now gives him meter so he can play alone give himself meter, and he's still one of the most damaging characters in the game. You put all that together and he is just one of the most ideal anchors this game has ever seen. When it comes to assists, I would recommend his A assist because it's a good beam that's very reliable, but Chaozu assist is good too because it does have full screen tracking and it does give meter. So you can use Chaozu if you want, but I would recommend the A because I think A is just overall more reliable and works better with most characters. Trunks. This is another fan favorite and another big winner of the patch. Thanks to all his many buffs in the recent patch, I feel he is now a very, very strong anchor. This is due to the fact that his biggest strength, his neutral, actually got buffed, so he has very, very scary neutral now. Namely, the fact that he can actually convert off of his 6S. He can literally go from 6S to beam to full combo, which is great. He also obviously has great mix-ups with his flips. He has very, very good left-right even if he's by himself. And now finally, since his flips got buffed, he actually does build meter. He actually is a more of a meter build character than he was before. So even if he doesn't have assists up, thanks to the fact that his flips are not robbing him of meter, but helping him gain more, means that he can do a lot of his good options a lot more often. That on top of the fact that he actually gets conversions off of his EX Shining Slash, stuff like that. He has access to a level five as well as actually getting mixed now off of his level two. He is a very well-rounded character and pretty much a great solid option for an anchor in this game. And of course, when it comes to his assists, he's one of those characters that's blessed with three very good ones. His A, Change the Future, sets people up for tick throws. His B is a beam. And again, I recommend beams over everything else. And of course, he's got a great C assist for mix-up purposes. Vegeta Blue. This is without a doubt a very, very strong point character. Vegeta Blue specializes in screen control, zoning, and mix-up all at the same time. So having him at the front of your team is very, very ideal because he can basically do whatever you need. He can keep the opponent away with his very, very strong zoning. He can play neutral well with just about any character. And honestly, his neutral outclasses a lot of characters. And then when it's time to mix, as long as you have assists available, he has very, very strong mix-up options that are even better now that his Lariat basically travels full screen 
And of course, who could forget the buff to his EX command grab now having armor on it. So now he can lunge across the screen, fly through assists and projectiles while trying to grab you. The character's honestly kind of a menace. He builds so much meter to so much damage. He's definitely up there as most notorious and most intimidating point characters in the entire game. When it comes to assists is where the character actually has his biggest weakness. I don't believe any of assists are actually that good. I would recommend either his A or his B. His A is hard to use, but once you get used to it, it's very, very strong. It does a lot of damage when it hits. It's very, very, very plus on block, and it covers a great angle. The only problem is it's slow and it's hard to use in combos. But in most other situations, it's great. His B is a standard short range lariat. It's usable, but not the best. So unlike some of these other point characters, that's like his only real problem is that he's kind of top heavy. He's incredible when he's on the screen, but when you cycle him out, he doesn't bring too much to the team. SSJ Vegeta, the success story, the character who went from useless to one of the most popular points in the entire game. SSJ Vegeta brings really, really strong and really, really annoying neutral to the team. His neutral now is only a few moves, but they're very, very powerful. His rapid shot, his angled key blast are very, very strong. And as long as you have good reactions, there's not a lot the opponent can do about it due to the fact that he can cancel his rapid key blast shot into a DP means they have to think twice about ever super dashing at it. And that just means that he's going to be constantly building meter and oppressing the opponent from all angles, whether it's on the ground or in the air. So add that in with the changes to his rocket kick. His rocket kick actually gives him some nice left, right, slightly high, low mix up on top of the fact that he's now a very, very high meter building character and one of the best active tag characters in the game. As of the time of this video, he's literally a perfect point character. When it comes to assists, he is one of the best characters in the game due to the fact that all three assists are amazing. They buffed his A assist. It lasts even longer now. It was always one of the best defensive assists in the game. Now it might just be the best because it lasts literally forever. His B assist got a very strong buff. It goes very far, very fast, and he recovers very quickly, so it's very good. And then his C assist is one of the best in the game because it is a fully invincible assist that hits very high in the air. So basically it's just up to you what kind of assist you want from him. He's basically just a team boosting character and he's a fantastic point for just about any team. Base Vegeta, another pretty obvious one. This is a great, great point character. He does everything you want out of a point character. He actually got his neutral slash zoning buffed. He can now shoot two key blasts in the air instead of the usual one. So it gives him more options for his keep away as well as just his general neutral. He has a little bit of anti zoning with his teleport kick. And of course he's got very, very good mix up opportunities, both on block with assists behind him or when he lands his level three, he even got a level four now, which is pretty darn funny. But overall, he is a very, very good choice for a point character. He works well with most characters, and he works at his best when he's got two assists behind him. For his assists, I would recommend his A assist. It is by far his best, in my opinion. It has a lot of block stun, a lot of hit stun, and it covers one of the best angles in the game. The further away the opponent is, the more dangerous it becomes, and that's a very strong tool for any assist to have. Vegito. One of the most controversial characters the game has ever known. Vegito, I would say, is best in the mid position. Not only is he meter penalized, but he is sort of a meter dependent character himself. What he brings to the table is very, very good staggers and just basically relentless pressure. He's very, very good once he gets on the opponent block. While his mix-up is not the best, he's just very annoying because he can just stay glued to the opponent. His neutral is decent as well. It's better with meter. He needs meter to be able to do the EX kicks. But even without the EX kicks, he does still have his 5M and he does still have his split finger shot. So overall, I think he's a very solid choice for a mid. He also sets up characters for active tag pretty well. When it comes to assists, 
This was the biggest area where he got nerfed. They finally nerfed Vegito A. They, they shot the hit stun on split finger shot, so you're no longer stunned in the air forever after you get hit by it. However, I would still say it is still his best assist. It still hits that beautiful angle. It still has the same amount of block stun, all that good stuff. You can still use it exactly the same. It's still great for a defensive option. That's another good reason to have him mid. That way your point character can utilize that assist. However, it's just not as good as it was before. You can try his B assist, but I would highly recommend still using his A. Even with the nerf, it's still a really powerful assist. Videl. Videl is another one for the anchor category. You love to see it. She has just been buffed and buffed and buffed, and now she is one of the game's definitive anchors in my opinion. As we've said many times, anchors, one of the most important aspects is they need to be able to play the game alone. And Videl does all three aspects of the game very, very well alone. I would actually say amazingly well alone. Her neutral with Say a Man is very, very good. It's hard for the opponent to either shoot key blasts, call assists, or even super dash. Say a Man shuts down a lot of stuff. Uh, her solo Oki, again, thanks to Say a Man, is very, very strong. They buffed it many, many times. And then her solo mix is ridiculous, especially with the change to her auto combo. She now has a built-in tick throw. Simply pressing LLL on a ducking opponent gives her a free command grab, which is crazy. And if the opponent stands up, you can hit them low. So Fidel on someone's block is just a major problem, whether she has assists or not. Her left, right, and now her high low is just insanely powerful. And you, you really do love to see it. When it comes to assists, Videl, like a couple of other characters we've already gone over, is pretty much blessed in all categories. Her A is very, very good due to the fact that it's super fast, has good block stun and very good hit stun, actually leaves the opponent standing. It's one of the few lariats in the game that leaves the opponent standing. Her B is great for mix-ups, and her C is a fully invincible uppercut. So whichever one that you need, all three of her assists are great for just about any team. Lord Yamcha, another massive success story. It finally happened. They finally buffed Yamcha. And man, is he strong now. Yamcha has retaken his place as a great, great anchor choice for this game. Yamcha now brings to the table some very solid neutral with the changes to his key blast. His neutral is actually a lot better than it was before. With the changes to his buttons, he is one of the best spark baiting characters in the entire game. He can literally bait spark and defeat it with his stand medium, which is literally so crazy. Not only that, is he has his own plus move, he can go to zero with a lot of different moves. He's got built-in gaps. He just all around very scary. And if that wasn't enough, they buffed Wolfang Fist completely. Wolfang Fist is actual mix now because not only can he do the cross up at any point and it's very very fast the cross up is way faster but he can dragon rush out of it so he can literally go from wolf fang to cross up to dragon rush to whatever like he's a full-on solo mix solo neutral character now still can do the level one level three even outside of limit break but in limit break it got even easier and they upped his damage because he has a lot more routing options now his key blast actually will bounce the opponent off the wall, giving him access to more routes than before. He's just all around a much more solid character, and I'm really happy to see Yamcha be one of the better anchor choices in the game again, because man, does he deserve it. When it comes to assists, I would recommend either his A or his B. Both are great. A is a long-reaching, super-fast lariat that's super easy to convert off of, and B is a beam. And as I've said many times, beam assists are king. So either of the two, whichever one you need, I would lead towards the beam always, but either way, Yamcha's got some great assists for your team. Zomasu, another buddy of mine. Zomasu is a fantastic mid. What he brings to your team is a lot of mix, a lot of zoning, and some of the best Oki in the game. The only drawback is he's one of the most meter hungry characters in the game, and he has some of the lowest meter build in the game. However, he did get some really good buffs in the most recent patch. The change to his EX Wall of Light is so fantastic because he finally has solo combo routes. He can finally do Wall of Light combos without the need of assists. 
and his neutral got buffed and his block strings got buffed. Everything about him got buffed, but he needs to spend even more meter now than ever before because you're gonna be doing EX Wall of Light all the time. So the fact that he builds no meter while needing to spend it literally all the time means you have to play him mid. But outside of that, I do think he's a great character. I think this is the best Amasu's ever been. He's so good in literally every category. The only thing, he just needs meter, that's it. For assists, I would highly recommend his A assist. It's an amazing all-purpose beam. You pretty much can't go wrong with that. However, I do like his B assist a lot more now too. It's a very, very good, very, very fast, reliable Lariat assist. It hits almost instantly and has very good hit stun. So if you need a Lariat, his B is good, but it's usually better to go with beams and he's got a super reliable, very easy to use beam. Gogeta 4, definitely a scary point character. What Gogeta 4 brings to the table is outstanding staggers as well as very reliable anti-zoning. Due to the nature of his gut punch, it can be hard to keep him out, but even without that, his double air dash gives him a lot of leverage to get in. So having his double air dash with assist behind him makes him a very tough character to deal with. And then once he gets in, thanks to his new buffs, his staggers are very scary, very relentless. He basically staggers like a Street Fighter character. And above all else, he has his level up system. So even though he doesn't build that much meter, it doesn't really matter as much for him because of the fact that your main focus is just getting levels. And if you have a good meter build assist behind him, his main focus is just getting levels. So even if he's not building that much meter, he's very, very oppressive at round start. And with how strong his staggers are, you really want assists behind him to make those staggers even scarier. For assists, I think this is where he struggles the most and always has. I don't think any of his assists are that good. You can go for the A assist if you want to try to focus on getting to level 7 when you tag him out. That's definitely a strong option. His B is probably the most reliable since it is a good Larry and it does go through stuff. So I would say B for most situations, A if you are looking to build a little extra meter or if you're trying to focus on getting him to level seven. And last but not least, we have the lab coat. She is pretty much destined to be a mid now. This is due to many reasons. The main one being that she is just so heavily meter nerfed. It's just not really worthwhile to have her on point. She's much more of a mid now because you need meter to be able to do her spins and her debuff, which is what she really shines at. So she can mix regardless of if she has assists behind her. Assists don't really matter. What she really needs is meter. So that fact makes me say that she should just be a mid because you don't really want her out on point not building you anything. You want to bring her in and you have a meter. That way the spin is more scary and the debuff is a huge threat. That being said, she also has a huge weakness though of not having any good assists. Her A assist is now a key blast property so it does not work for pressure. Her B assist has never been good. It's the worst barrier in the game. It actually doesn't really function like 18 or 17's barrier. And then her C assist is a beam. Honestly, her C assist is her best assist. You should only have one C assist on your team at a time. And if you pick her, she's going to be it. And with that, we have covered every character's recommended position and assist. I'm really happy with the way this list turned out. I think it's pretty amazing that the list is completely balanced. Believe it or not, I did not plan it like that. It just sort of happened. But I guess it really just goes to show you how powerful the team building is in this game. You have a lot of options and a lot of different characters fit into a lot of positions and you really do love to see it. But that's gonna do it for this one. Thanks so much for listening, guys. I hope this was helpful. If it was, please feel free to leave a like. It does help the channel and the video a lot and I truly appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss my next guide. I still got a lot of guides coming up. After this, I'm gonna be doing a lot of character guides. So if there are characters you're looking to play, especially if those characters are Ginyu, Frieza, Zamasu, or Baby, keep your eyes peeled because those guides will be coming relatively soon. We also do match reviews as well as online sets, all that good stuff. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss all that. If you have questions about the list or you have more questions about how to build your team, feel free to leave a comment down below. I always check the comments. I also answer a lot of questions live on my live stream over on twitch.tv slash Mr. Acolyte. So if you have some in-depth questions that you want answered or you just want tips for the game, come stop by. Me and my community, we help people all the time. 
as well as in the Discord. Feel free to jump in the Discord. I don't think I've ever plugged the Discord on YouTube before, but yeah, we have a great community that's always helping people over in the Discord, so... So whether you want some help with the game or you just want to chill, you know where to come find us. But either way, thanks again for watching. You guys have a great one, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.